Hello, welcome to the Master Anatomy platform, and you are with Dr. Akani. Today, we'll be talking about the cubital fossa. And in sure you get to know the location, the boundaries, the contents, and the clinical correlates of this cubital fossa. So, where is the cubital fossa located? The cubital fossa is a triangular depression found in front of your elbow in front of the elbow all right so uh, it's a triangular piece that is in front of the elbow all right so it has bandage just like a triangle would have it has a base it has an apex it also has a roof a floor and it has medial and lateral sides all right so the base is an imaginary line between the two epicondyles, that of the humerus, uh, two epicondyles on the humerus, all right? Now, the apex is made up of a junction of two muscles. So let's talk about the medial and lateral borders first. So the medial border is made up of the lateral, is made up by the lateral border of the pronator teres muscle. So the lateral side of the pronator teres muscle forms the medial border, while the medial side of the brachioradialis muscle will form the lateral border. I hope you understand why we are saying medial side for um, lateral border, medial the med, uh, lateral side for medial border. It's because of the orientation of these muscles. So, this muscle has a, this brachioradialis muscle has a lateral side and a medial side. Of course, we are looking at the cubital fossa that is in uh, a depression in the in between the arm and the forearm, and we are looking at it's just in the center. So we are looking at the medial side of this brachioradialis. While when you come to the pronator teres, because this cubital fossa is in the center there, we are looking at the lateral border of this pronator teres. So the pronator teres forms the, the lateral border of the pronator teres will form the medial border, while the lateral border of the brachioradialis will form the medial border. All right. So having said that, now let's look at what forms the apex. The apex is formed by the union of these two muscles, the brachioradialis and the pronator teres. So it forms this is the apex. All right. So that's that junction between of the two muscles. All right. So we have the base imaginary line. Um, medial border, lateral side of the pronator teres, uh, lateral border, medial side of the brachioradialis, and the apex, the union of the brachioradialis and the pronator teres. So, what forms the roof? The roof is formed by the skin and the superficial fissure, all right, which is um, made up of some vessels including the cephalic vein the cephalic vein the uh, the basilic vein and uh, the median cubital vein median cubital vein connecting the basilic vein and the cephalic vein all right we also have in there we have the the deep of the um, of the biceps bracket and the bicipital aponeurosis that helps to enforce it. So you need to note that the bicipital aponeurosis is beneath the median cubital vein. Median cubital vein. So you see the bicipital aponeurosis is beneath where the veins are on top, are on top of it. All right. We also have the lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm uh, and the median cutaneous nerve of forearm. Remember the the lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm is an extension, is a continuation of the musculocutaneous nerve all right, that supplies the brachialis, the biceps brachii, and the coracoid brachii. We have talked about this in the lecture of the brachial plexus. All right, so that's um, the musculocutaneous nerve, and it's running down. All right, so these are the the um, uh, structures found within the superficial fissure of the roof of the cubital fossa. So the skin, the superficial fissure. All right, you also have um, uh, the floor. The floor is formed by two muscles. The brachialis medially and the supinator muscle laterally. So this is the supinator muscle. 
all right and um, this is the brachialis underneath the uh, tendon and biceps all right so let's look at the the content of the cubital process we'll arrange this content from lateral to medial all right and if we do so you'll see that we we're talking about the radial nerve radial nerve in between the brachioradialis and the brachialis all right so that's the brachial the radial nerve running in so it has the deep branch and the superficial branch so that's the deep branch the deep interosseous uh, nerve all right we also have the biceps tendon tendon of biceps brachii okay then we have the termination of the of the brachial artery forming the radial artery and the ulnar artery all right and um then finally we have the median nerve so that's the arrangement from lateral to to um, media all right remember that it ends with the median nerve always remember that it ends with lateral to median ending with the median nerve so the median nerve is the most the most media radial nerve tendon of biceps brachii the termination of the brachial artery and the median nerve lying most medial we also have the ulnar nerve that is not really in the cubital fossa, it's just around that region and lies posterior to the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Okay, so that's the content of the. So let's look at the clinical correlates. The very important clinical correlate here is the vena puncture, which has to do because of the medial cubital vein the location of the medial cubital vein which lies most superficial all right and the separation of this medial cubital vein from the from the rest of the deep vessel especially the especially the the uh, brachial artery and the median nerve all right so you see separated by the bicipital aponeurosis that bicipital aponeurosis helps separate and you see it lies on top of the bicipital aponeurosis connecting the basilic vein with the um, cephalic vein. So that makes it easy for venipuncture, venipuncture at that point. All right, so the other one is the breakout pulse. I believe to take breakout pulse at that point because the, the basilic, the breakout artery is actually separated just by the bicipital aponeurosis. So it makes it easy for you to be able to take breakout it's a bit superficial, but just that it is separated by the bicepital opinion and keeps it deep um, within the contents of the cubital fossa. And that makes it easy for you to take breakout balls. So that's that's about the clinical correlation. So thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's lecture. Please try and visit our site, the masteranatomy.info platform, so you could see other lectures. You know, we need to get to the break, lecture on the breakout plexus, lecture on the arm, all right, to be able to fully understand what's happening in the cubital fossa, all right. So familiarize yourself with the quiz and the cubital fossa and other lectures on that side. So the site again is www.masteranatomy.info. So thank you for listening. There are references. See you in our next lecture.